Well then, time to tell you the third story, huh? My name's Shindo Makoto. I'm in third year class D. You know that our school is famous for sports, right? Well, with so many students here, of course we'd be good. Not just at sports. It's not like we're full of smart kids, but even so, we're different to other schools around here. That's why so many people from here get into Tokyo University. As for me, I'm not very good at study, so I'll put that aside. Let me tell you about sports. Sports are great. Because there's only one winner. Unlike university entrance exams, there's not two ways it can go, pass or fail. There's only one top. That's what you battle for. You don't really hear about guys who like study doing that, do you? That's why sports are different. Everyone battles with their own power. With that, they all aim for the top. And that is youth. And so, Kurata, that's why you shouldn't spend so much time studying. Give some of your attention to sports as well, and you'll really feel what it's like to live. Even so, are you doing any sports right now? I am. So you do play sports, huh? I've tried all sorts. I'm pretty confident in my skills. Anyway, we'll leave it at that for now. It's fine to be passionate about sports. But if you get too wrapped up in them, be careful not to turn that passion into hatred. When a person dies full of hatred, they become a jibakure, right? When that happens, apparently your spirit chooses the one place it has strongest feelings for. When you die full of hatred and malice, it's usually a murder or suicide. That's why you become a spirit attached to the place where you died. Especially if you're killed with a lot of regrets, you're unable to get rid of your attachments and so, you're unable to escape from that place. Guys that play sports are deeply attached to winning, right? The more effort you put in, the stronger that feeling is. So imagine what might happen if you suddenly died in an accident. Not only that, but just a few days before a big tournament. Even if you die, you can't just let it be. That's why you become a jibakure. Not in the place you died, but in the place you practiced your heart out in. You don't really hear stories about guys who study their hearts out and then haunt classrooms after they die, right? It's not because they loved study so much that they couldn't help it, but rather the opposite. They couldn't stand it. That's why they don't become spirits attached to the place. That's why gyms and sports grounds are different. There's a good chance that guys who die while they still have some regret about sports will become a jibakure. Haven't you ever heard about someone hearing the sound of balls being hit? on an empty baseball field? Or the sound of a basketball in the gym late at night? Or voices yelling support and the sound of echoing footsteps? You gotta have heard something like that at least once, right? That's the jibakure who just couldn't forget about their favorite sport. It's pretty sad, right? They become so wrapped up in something, and then, after just a few short years, their brief life comes to an end. 
but you can't be sympathetic. If you are, the spirits will take advantage of you. The story I'm about to tell you is about a guy who felt sympathy for a spirit and the terrible things that happened to him. The captain of the basketball team is in my class. In our club, we have a story that's passed down. Basketball is a pretty popular sport now. But, 10 years ago, getting people to join the club was pretty tough. The captain of the team at the time was a guy called Tadokoro Yoshiki. He wasn't able to find any skilled players that year either, and he was worried about how to strengthen the team. Tadokoro was desperate because he wanted to reach the national finals, whatever it took. At the time, there was a new guy in the track team that everyone was raving about. His name was Kawaguchi. He'd received a lot of attention in junior high as a short distance runner. What caught Tadokuro's attention was his height. He was 185 centimeters tall. Amazing, right? He was a short distance runner, so he had leaping power. And he had a pretty good record as a long jumper as well. So his jumping skills were top notch. He was just the guy he needed to help strengthen the team. He did whatever he could to get Kawaguchi to join him. But it wasn't like the track team could just ignore what he was doing, right? After all, he was their ace and they had high hopes for him. They couldn't just sit by and let him be snatched away. They warned him, but Tadokuro continued to escalate his solicitations. Unable to stand it any longer, the track team called him out and then lynched him. But Tadokuro was a tough guy. What do you think happened? He told the teachers. That's right. He got people to take photos of him where he was assaulted, and then he showed them to the teachers. As you'd expect, that was the end for the track team. They stopped bothering him after that. But the real problem was how Kawaguchi himself felt. No matter what Tadokoro tried, Kawaguchi had no desire to play basketball. How do you think Kawaguchi really felt? He didn't want to quit the track team. He'd been training in the track team since junior high. Plus, he held many records proving his skills, and he was confident in it. Why on earth would he quit? There was no way. That was another reason why the track team decided to leave Tadokoro alone. But still, he kept going after him. He stuck to Kawaguchi's side like a lover and wouldn't leave him alone. The other guys on the basketball team soon got fed up with his antics as well. One of them quit, followed by another. They probably hadn't liked basketball all that much to begin with anyway. If that was so, then Tadokoro had no regrets. All he could think about was Kawaguchi. It was like, if he could just get him, and him alone, then they would be able to win. But that wasn't very realistic. Then, somehow, the teachers heard about what was going on as well. Members were quitting the club one after the other, and the captain wasn't showing up to practice either, instead spending his time chasing Kawaguchi around. 
Then, finally, they forced Tadokoro out of the captain position. It seems obvious to us, but Tadokoro himself couldn't understand why. This was how passionate he was about basketball, and yet no one seemed to understand it. It was strange. Well, his passion was kind of warped. He was the type of guy who got really scary when you pissed him off. What do you think happened? He hassled the new guy who became captain. Tadokuro harassed the new captain. He tripped him up during practice and purposefully passed on the wrong information, then blamed it on the captain. He went about things in a dirty way. Hey, Kurata, you know the term sportsmanship, right? You've no, du you've no doubt heard it at the opening ceremonies for sports days, track meets, etc. We, the athletes, will play fair and with good sportsmanship. The athletes vow, yeah? That word is the symbol of a true sportsman. If you love sports, you've got to play fair, no matter what. Guys that act shady like Tadokoro are not sportsmen. The other team members' hostility towards him grew even larger. Everyone started to ignore him. By the time he realized it, Nobody would give him the time of day anymore. He didn't like that. He got even worse. Finally, he quit the team. Nobody opposed it. Rather, they were happy about it. The most important thing in basketball is teamwork. Even if you had skills like Tadokoro, but you couldn't work with others then you would just be in the way. And now that obstacle was gone. Everyone thought it was all over and settled peacefully. But after Tadokoro quit the team, after he quit, he secretly started his own new club. He made his own basketball team with new members he gathered from somewhere. My teammates understand me. They're the best. Compared to the track team and other basketball guys, it's like night and day. He was extremely proud of himself. His eyes sparkled. Well, not like there was anyone who took him seriously anyway. Then, one morning, Tadokoro was found dead beneath the basketball hoop in the gym. Perhaps he snuck in during the night to practice. He was surrounded by basketballs. It was widely known that Tadokoro had created his own basketball team. The police came and they looked for members of his new team, but they couldn't find anyone who fit. In the end, they put it down to part of Tadokoro's wild imagination. They chalked his death up to the hard training he was putting in each night. That's when it all began. People started to hear the sound of balls in the gym. Perhaps, even now, Tadokoro is still practicing, together with his teammates. Although I haven't seen him yet. So, Kurata, do you want to go and check out the gym right now to go with your research? It's gotten pretty dark out now. How about it? You might be able to run into Tadokoro's spirit.
Let's go. Now you're talking. All right, let's head to the gym. Ah, uh, but I hate this place. The hall. Isn't it too quiet? Did everyone go home already? Putting that aside, this school really is huge. Even just getting to the gym is a struggle. Anyway, we're here. Hey, Kurata. There's still time to turn back. What are you going to do? You going to go in? Yes. Okay, but don't come to regret it. All right, I'm going to open the door now. I can't see very well. Someone turn on the lights. Ah, they're on. Huh? What the? What's up with the others? Eh. Uh, ah. Uh, I looked around. Shindo-san and I were the only ones in the gym. Ah. Uh, they're all standing outside. Maybe they're scared. Kurata? Was it you that turned on the lights? Shindo-san frowned. I didn't turn the lights on. Shindo-san lowered his voice as I shook my head. Well, I didn't turn them on. So, who did? Everyone stood by the entrance, looking at us. They couldn't have turned the lights on from there. So then, who did? Then the door suddenly shut. <whistles> Calm down, Kurata! Shindo-san grabbed my arm. Well, this has gone south. I couldn't sense anyone else in the gym. But was that really the truth? Maybe someone was hiding. What was that? I heard the sound of footsteps. The sound of someone squeaking across the floor. It was getting closer. No way. I mean, nobody else was there. The sound stopped right in front of us. Tadokoro? Shindo-san suddenly said. No way! Could Shindo-san see him? Was he speaking to him? What's this? Huh? It's for me? Shindo-san put his hand out. It was like he got something. But I couldn't see either Tadokoro-san nor what he received. Um, Shindo-san? Eh. Shindo-san was focused on what he'd received. Then footsteps echoed nearby again. It was like Tadokoro-san was walking around us. Finally, the footsteps got further away. Hey, what happened? Suddenly the door opened as someone called out. The tension suddenly eased, as though coming out of a dream. Everyone outside came into the gym. You scared me. The door suddenly closed. Hey, are you okay? That's so dangerous. You can't be alone in the gym with just another boy, you know. I thought my heart was going to stop. Because you're so cute, Emi-chan. Did you meet that guy, Tadokoro? 
It was scary, huh? You're covered in sweat. Everyone started to chime in. Let's go back to the room. That was all I could say. Hold on. Are you gonna leave him here? Iwashita-san pointed at something. Oh yeah. Shindo-san was still in the gym. Um, Shindo-san? Shindo-san was looking at something, muttering. Oh, no way, what happened? It didn't seem like the right time to call out to him. Well, I'm sure he'll be fine. Let's just leave him be. Iwashita-san brushed him aside coldly. But... His story is finished now. You've got other things to do, right? What should I do? Shindo-san was muttering again, looking at something in his hands. Leave him there. I'll probably have to leave him here. I left the gym with everybody else. After a short break when we returned to the room, Shindo-san came back. Thank goodness. Still, what was that just now? Was he okay? Nothing seemed to be different just from a quick look at him. His eyes didn't look blank like they did before, either. Well, dwelling on it wouldn't do any good. I have to listen to the next story. Well, who shall we listen to next? <laughs>